Hello, I am Lux, and I enjoyed this episode so much better than the last one! And I'm Ember, and I was expecting more phoenixes. Or at least more screen time for phoenixes. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 11, Meltdown. I kind of knew a little bit about this one quite a bit ahead of time. I didn't know exactly what was going to happen to Spike, but I did read a summary, the official summary of this episode a while ago, you know, getting prepped to do drawings and stuff like that. So when I saw the episode mentioned in a chat room I hang out in, like, oh, one of the characters is going to change forever. I'm like, I know which one. But I really enjoyed this episode. I laughed a couple of times. Everything was really nice and solid. And we got another allegory for puberty. Hmm, let's see. We got to stick with one romance trope, so you weren't overwhelmed? Are we talking about Spike and Rarity? Yeah. Okay, I kind of like blocked that one out for now, plus it was very subtle in this episode. And it was more used to hype up the embarrassedness, or how Spike was embarrassed in the episode, than anything. So it was used to great effect to emphasize... Growing up can be embarrassing. Ah, and it kind of went through at least the stereotypical male puberty, too. Because males, when they go through puberty, have a tendency to start smelling really bad, and facial hair, and pimples, and... And I thought Smolder was going to be a little more helpful. I know dragons aren't always the most camaraderie of creatures, but come on. Don't you feel bad for the guy? Culturally, she wouldn't. She would be proud of him, which is what she was. She was like, congratulations, man, you're growing up. That's awesome. Can't wait till they kick you out and you have to fend for yourself. It's going to be neat. I really enjoy, because it sounds like she was like, I really enjoyed my time. Well, considering she got, that Smolder got sent to the school, has Smolder gone through molts? Because other than Spike, I think every other dragon we've seen has had wings. So that may not necessarily be a molt thing, or it could be, and... Every other dragon that we've seen has always been older than Spike. I think that's pretty much been the case. And who knows, Spike's overall growth may have been stunted from the way he was hatched. Because there were oddities in his hatching. Also, his overall diet compared to, you know, the availability of rocks and gems in the Dragonlands. Hmm. Which also explains why he didn't change that much after he molted. Because he really just got wings, and it looks like he got a little bit darker, maybe slightly larger. But not a huge change. I almost thought they were going to keep the diamond patterning, because after the worst of the scales were off, he still had the diamond patterning in gray. It was kind of odd that they went the whole gargoyles route and completely covered in stone. It was kind of neat, but I also thought that it would be like stuff flecking off and stuff like that, because his scales started to get darker. If you looked at him, his... Claws and feet were a darker color than the rest of his body. So I was kind of expecting more of a flaking off because it was called molting, molt effect. Because that's how it, molting is it just kind of peels off over a time and it's what several different creatures go through. Birds, lizards, insects. They go through a molting period where basically their skin becomes too hard and they break out of it and there's new skin underneath. So I'm surprised we didn't see any bumps on his back that would indicate wings. Oh, maybe this was just a more simplified way to animate it. Also, it made a good surprise at the end. Because we didn't really know what he was going to look like after the molting. I knew he was going to have a change in Spike was growing older. But I didn't know how much of a change they were going to make to Spike. Were they going to make him grow a little bit older and have to give him a different voice actor or actress? Though I'm pretty sure the voice actress for him... Probably has the range to make an older Spike without it sounding too fake. Well, it was just kind of interesting because you would think Spike has known everyone long enough. It, okay, well, yes, it's embarrassing. You really have to lie about it. Because, I mean, by lying, he made it worse for himself because he got himself put in charge of the tourist ponies. Yeah, but Spike, even though he's been around them this long, he may still have a very... And this is also something very new for him. So he could not be thinking straight, because that happens to teenagers, too. I mean, literally half your brain shuts off for repairs and reconstruction. It's one of the reasons they sleep longer. Here's a hint, parents. 
Your teenagers aren't being lazy by sleeping longer. Their bodies literally need it. It's basically closed down for repairs. Yeah. You're going through the stage of being a teenager. You sleep longer because your body, your body is literally using its energy to rebuild the brain for adulthood. And it increased usage of energy to, I don't know, grow a human body. Because growth spurts happen? That takes a lot of energy. And that might even make it more usable for pre-adolescent viewers that, you know, he was so embarrassed and there was no reason to be. So driving home that lesson that, oh, you don't have to be embarrassed. I think that's what they were going for is they're trying to give this nice, very visual, especially male oriented look at the changes you go through. Which is very interesting to see because despite the adult fandom, the show's target audience is still young girls. But they have probably learned from statistics that young boys actually watch this show too. That's probably not as great of a number as the young female audience, but I mean, when I was younger, I watched Sailor Moon and Rainbow Bright and you name the show, I probably watched it. <laughs> I mean, there were cartoons. The only time I didn't watch a show is when I thought it was stupid. And even then, I sometimes watch those out of sheer boredom. Yeah, that can happen. But there was some really good joke in this episode. And poor Rarity. <laughs> what? Yes. Also, if ponies can have a negative reaction to phoenix feathers, one way does Celestia have a phoenix for a pet if it can negatively affect ordinary ponies. Two, why is Rarity still putting them into the ensemble if she can if she is making an outfit that can literally make a pony magically ill? Hmm. Also, what part of the story did we need for Rarity to be ill? To um be deaf? Hmm. Like was there really any point in the story other than a couple of jokes? Not really, because she would have still come to Zakora to get the cream on Spike's behalf. Yeah, and we would have gotten the everyone's going to get the same present joke. So I think the only advantage there was she was talking loud enough that Spike could tell it was Rarity and desperately decided he needed to hide. Which he still could have hidden no matter who it was, because it was some pony on the other side of the door. If you're embarrassed, that's enough reason to hide. And it's nice to see Zagora again. It has been a little while. And what's really funny is, as I listened to her in the episode, I started expecting everyone to rhyme like her as she spoke. My brain was going, okay, the next line's going to rhyme like this. But it didn't rhyme. Oh, wait, that wasn't Zagora speaking. Then considering that it's her speech pattern, wouldn't other characters emulating it come across as mocking? Hmm. Well, they could do it by accident. Because humans have a tendency to do that on their own. If you are around someone long enough, which can be anywhere from a minute to longer, you accidentally start picking up the way they speak. They have to be very careful about that, especially with accents and especially on phone calls. Because I've noticed myself doing it completely by accident. He was like, oh, oh, suddenly started speaking with his accent. Whoops. It's kind of a, from what we can tell, it's kind of a tribal thing. It was our way of like trying to fit in with a group. So we started picking up on the way they speak and we blend in. But now in this modern day of instant offense. <laughs> really doesn't go over well. Nope. You said the word betrothed wrong. I hate you. What? <laughs> you support that ship over my ship. But moving on. So, any more nitpicks for the episode? Um, the whole point where Rowdy's going, well, why did you ever set Pee Wee free? Oh, phoenixes aren't meant to be domesticated. Celestia has one. That was our first exposure to a phoenix. Yeah, but who says that phoenix doesn't choose to be Celestia's pet as opposed to stealing one? But I'm specifically pointing out Spike's phrasing of they aren't meant to be domesticated. Hmm. Well, at least one pony has one. And yes, there's nothing wrong with returning him to his parents, especially with the level of intelligence we've seen Phoenix's exhibit in the MLP universe. Hmm. Also, who says Philomena is domesticated? True, true. She could just be hanging out. <laughs> just remembering how evil Philomena was. Yeah, that was really not nice. 
poor Fluttershy. Though, you know, you think about how long a phoenix lives, kind of like our idea of Celestia just trolling everyone during the theater episode. You know, you ran a long time, you get a little bored. Just thinking back on that episode, that was a fun episode. Also, I can't believe they're doing tours of the school. I can't believe that the school is that public and well-known and popular already to be giving tours, especially without the um, headmaster from the Educational Society not coming back down on them and pointing out that they're not accredited and trying to take them down, which is probably going to be the season finale. I'm almost guessing that these people started coming in on their own. So Twilight was like, we have to do something with them. Give them tours. Because I have a feeling they were coming in on their own, disturbing classes. And Twilight was like, well, the best way to solve this is just to organize it. Because just blocking them, they're just going to find another way in. So make it legal. Let them come in. Have a tour guide so they don't end up interrupting classes. We're good. You know, because they've got the main six running this school. They are now famous now because of the book. If word got out that they had a school. And word is going to get out because they had to get the pony students from somewhere. And they can't all be from Ponyville. Well, they could, but I doubt it. Ponyville is kind of a small town getting larger all the time. I liked it better when it was more rural. Kind of like how people are complaining that uh, cars are driving through their previously quiet neighborhoods because Google Maps is routing them to the areas of least traffic. That's a fun fact. Both Waze and Google are getting in trouble now because... <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> quiet neighborhood! Not so quiet anymore. Cars are constantly going through there because it's the best route when the main route is being clogged up by everyone who doesn't know how to drive. I see that as someone who has no experience driving. You have some experience driving, just not a lot of experience driving in heavy traffic. Good point, thank you. So what else do you want to talk about in this episode? Because I, I quite enjoyed it. It was fun in the way they handled Spike's growth and everything. There was like no cringy moments for me. It wasn't cringy, but it was more of one of those slice of life episodes. And then we spiced it up with Twilight shooting energy bolts. Which was kind of awesome. Like, why didn't she take them out sooner? Or are they magic resistant? Could that be a thing? Are they magic resistant? Also, the catch at the end. I'm like, you couldn't have put up a force shield or just caught them in your magic and levitated them? Or teleport them? Because they were hanging at the end. You could see them and then go poof. So unless she had to be touching them to teleport them, in which case shouldn't she have been going for them directly? Because we've seen her wink with other ponies, which reminds me, I remember her winking Spike without touching him. So she should have just been able to wink them away. But they wanted to make this scene more dramatic and let Spike do some aerial stuff. I'm like, he just got his wings. What the heck, man? He got it figured out a lot faster than Twilight did. Well, he is younger than Twilight, and dragons naturally have wings, where most unicorns do not, so there's probably a little more innate knowledge, but still, it was overdone. He could not be flying that well that quickly. I was hoping to have a Smolder Teach Spike episode. That's really more what I was looking for when I realized that this wasn't going to be all about phoenixes. Because you thought of the phoenixes first when you heard Molt. Yes, because... Birds, molt. So I was like, okay, this is either going to be about the phoenixes or the hippogriffs. Or griffins. I was focused more on hippogriffs over griffins because the hippogriffs only recently returned to hippogriff form. Hmm. So they would have less experience with the hippogriff form. Ah. Hmm. Now I'm going to have to draw Spike with wings. I'm going to have to color sample from this episode too because I'm pretty sure he's darker. Because I remember him being the same color as Twilight, but when they were next to each other, I'm like, he's definitely darker than her now. Well, you'll see when you do the color sample, because you can compare it to your old color samples. Hmm. I'm trying to think of what else I'd want to go over about this episode. I just remember really enjoying it and going, ooh, ooh, ooh. So how are they going to, ooh. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to go over? Not really. I mean, it wasn't cringy, but it wasn't like, oh my god, this is awesome. It was a slice of life episode with some magical girl moments thrown in just to spice it up. Yes, I found it very enjoyable myself. I wonder what else we're going to get this season, because it definitely seems to be like teenage plus adult problems this season. Well, if you think about how long the show's been running, the original people watching it are still watching it. They're now older and are experiencing different problems. Also, by expanding 
the realms of the types of problems that are dealt with, it gives them more writing material. It allows them to be a little bit more free with their concepts. Because they've been breaking away from the earlier very strict formats where we always have to have a lesson, we always have to have a letter to Celestia, Twilight always has to be the one to write it. They branched out on that and then they've kind of moved away from doing the Sailor Says at the end of the episode. <laughs> uh, all you have to do is include that little section at the end. It can be educational programming. I don't think that's still... True I don't anymore? think that's true anymore because if it was, a lot more shows would have those tags at the end. At that one point, that's pretty much all you needed. He's like, I think it was like, as long as you have like this much educational content in your show, your show could be considered educational. So that's why a lot of shows tag like that 30 seconds to a minute on the end of the episode because it allowed them to qualify for that. So like you'd have it in G.I. Joe and you had it, I think you had it in Denver. You had it in Sailor Moon, they did the Sailor Says. You had it at the end of She-Ra and He-Man because it allowed them to count it as an educational block of programming. And there used to be standards for how much educational programming a station had to broadcast. That's why internet is easier. So shall we wrap things up with our outro and stuff? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 11. I almost said Molt Effect, but Molt. My brain broke. <laughs> molt Down. It's like molt Meltdown. Down. Sorry, that's my brain was going completely. Molt Down. Wow, you're, you're still here. You're one of those people who sits through all the end credits of the movies, aren't you? Yeah, I do that too. I, I feel you. So... Yeah, we say a lot of the same stuff over and over at the outros because it kind of stays the same. Lux draws a lot. There are links to look at more of the art. There are links to buy the art, and there are links to make donations to help produce art and, you know, technically cover living expenses in tiny increments, some of which cost less than your actual cup of coffee. Also, we have a lot of videos. Yeah, we don't actually usually link back to other videos because when you watch one they kind of start to come up in the recommendations also if you hit subscribe also if you just click on the channel name so well technically that's a link but we didn't put it there youtube did comments we get some interesting discussions going on in the comments sometimes thank you everyone i think that was everything links comments subscribe watch art stuff Bye! Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogue, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.